papá. Let's start this journey where all journeys start, at the beginning. So grab your China map and let's get moving. The first three days we stay in the capital city of the People's Republic of China, Beijing. Then we move south by night train to Xi'an, to spend two days in one of the oldest cities of China. Our next stop, Zhangjiajie, we reach by plane and will explore the national parks there for another two days. Finally, our last stop is Shanghai, the world's largest city. Late at night we arrived in Beijing and checked in to this courtyard hotel. We will stay here for the next three nights. Next morning and on the way to explore Beijing, let me share a few things you should know about and prepare for your China trip. Buy a Chinese SIM card. There are even some which will provide you access to Google, Facebook, WhatsApp and Co. Because many of the common websites and services are blocked in China. For that reason a VPN account can be handy. Unlikely to other countries I traveled to, most places in China will not accept payment with credit card or cash. Even at public attractions, foreign credit cards are declined. You will have to install the Alipay app on your phone and top up money on your e-wallet. Since 2019 there is an option called Tourpass to top up your e-wallet as a foreigner. And in addition I recommend to install the following apps on your phone. WeChat, which is a common messenger app used in China, Baidu or Maps.me, which will work well for navigation and also offers offline map download. If you plan to take public transport, which by the way is very well established and reliable, you can buy your ticket at the first day at the subway station. Great, then we are all set and ready for our first stop at the Forbidden City. Completed in 1420, during the early Ming dynasty, it is China's best preserved and the largest imperial palace in the world. I was really impressed by the dimensions of the Forbidden City, the artworks, the traditional gardens and especially the impression you will get of the imperial living. And here are some more interesting facts about the Forbidden City. The construction took 14 years. It was built by over 1 million workers and it has 980 buildings. It was the imperial palace of China for 492 years and it is surrounded by a 10 meter high wall. It hosts 14 million visitors per year. In the north of the Forbidden City, we entered the Qingshan Park and went up to the hill to get rewarded with a great view over the city. Next, we moved on to the Temple of Heaven and for me the most striking building was the Circular Hall of Prayer for Good Harvests. While walking through Beijing, we were able to experience the lifestyle of the locals especially early in the morning, when people are gathering to do their exercises. The evenings in Beijing we spent at Hoi Hai Bar Street and Wang Fu Ching. In general we did not have a fixed schedule for the evenings and also took our dinner at places which caught our attention. Only one dinner we planned in advance and visited one of the famous restaurants serving Peking duck. It was really great and the duck was very delicious. One full day during our stay in Beijing we reserved for the trip to the Great Wall of China. The easiest way is to book a tour with transport from and back to your hotel. But if you are willing to spend additional time and on the other hand save some money, you can go by public transport. So did we. Traveling by public transport also gives you the chance to get in contact with locals. I made the experience that majority of locals are very helpful and also very curious to talk to you. So the language barrier is sometimes a challenge. As a preparation for your China trip, you may consider to learn a few basic phrases in Chinese. Around noon we arrived at Mu Tianyu, which is the closest Great Wall location from Beijing and also a completely renovated part. It's up to you how far you walk along the wall. 
but don't miss to bring some water as you might walk quite a distance. And also don't forget your camera. If you bring along your drone, be aware that the chances are high that you will have to share the air with some other drone pilots and also helicopters. You have to register your drone to be allowed to fly in China and I experienced that many of the places are no-fly zones. With the visit at the Great Wall, also our stay in Beijing ended and we moved on to Xi'an, taking the night train. To me, Xi'an represents exactly what I imagined from a Chinese city and we did not waste any time after arrival to visit the Terracotta Warriors and Horse Museum, which is located around 30 kilometers east of the city. The Terracotta Army was an afterlife army for the first emperor of China. The construction began already 246 before Christ after the Emperor Jin ascended the throne at the age of 13. Over 700,000 laborers took about 40 years to complete the statues. It was discovered by local farmers by digging a well in 1974, that's 2,200 years after it was built. It's amazing that none of the about 8,000 figures is exactly alike, and each warrior has unique facial features. The museum includes bit 1, bit 2 and bit 3, as well as an exhibition hall. Coming back to Xi'an city, we rush to the south gate of the most complete city wall that has survived in China. The wall is 12 meters tall and 14 kilometers long. We rented a tandem bicycle and cycled to the north gate of the wall. And when we arrived it was already getting dark. We walked to the bell tower which looks amazing at night. Not far away we reached also the Xi'an Muslim quarter which was full of life and the perfect place to get some food and do shopping. On the second day I was so excited to experience the most dangerous hike in the world at Mount Hua. You have probably seen the photos of people walking across a few thin planks bolted into a mountainside. Unfortunately, as it was end of December and the weather was also not good, so the plank walk was closed on that day. And maybe in general during this time frame of the so year. Cold. But nobody wanted to tell us. But on the other hand, we were so lucky to hike along the path of the mountain without any crowds. Then, back by cable car at the feet of Huashan, we went straight to the airport to catch our flight to Zhangjiajie. It's really cool when you go above the roofs of Zhangjiajie with the cable car up to the Tianmen mountain. At the mountain itself we walked one round along the cliffs including thrilling cliffhanging walkways and glass skywalks which make it unquestionable one of the best mountains to visit in China. In the middle of the mountain we spent some time at the large Tianmen mountain temple and took some snack to recharge our batteries. Because the most challenging part came at the end, climbing down the 999 steps from Heaven's Door. Arrived at the bottom of the stairway, there is the option to go by bus down the road with 99 sharp bends back to Zhangjiajie. As we already expected that the day will be tiring, we booked a room at the Hamona Resort and Spa at Zhangjiajie and spent the rest of the day relaxing there. Next day we took the free shuttle service to the Changjiajie National Forest Park, which is also known by many as the Avatar Mountains. The weather was nice and as the park is not that crowded in the winter months, we were able to go to several areas within one day. A unique experience was the ride in the Bailong Glass Elevator, which is built onto the side of a huge cliff. On that day it also paid off to bring the drone and camera with me. Now it's already time to fly to Shanghai, where we will spend the last day of our trip. As one day is really short to spend in the largest city of the world, we decided to focus on two attractions only. First we went to the Yu Garden, which is the classic Chinese garden with a rich history and culture. And next to it you will find the Yu Yan Bazaar with many restaurants, tea houses and shops. It is a good place to taste some local snacks and buy souvenirs. Secondly, we went to the Band, Shanghai's most popular place, with its colonial buildings and skyscraper views. We spent there several hours, took the ferry to the other side, walked around to the area of packed skyscrapers, queued an hour for dinner, before we enjoyed later at night a walk along the Band, 
with an amazing view at the skyline of Shanghai, which for us was also the perfect end for this China trip. I hope you liked this video and it provides you some valuable content about China. If you have any feedback, leave a comment. I would also be happy if you subscribe to my channel. And to all of my already subscribers, I'm very grateful for all your views and comments, which help me to get better in video content creation. Thanks a lot and see you next time.